In this lecture, we will talk about the ab initio Wigner Monte Carlo method. This is a Monte Carlo method for the many body Wigner equation. It is an ab initio method because no physical approximation is introduced and the simulations are based on first principle um, of, of, of physics. Um, you actually have situations, uh, practical situations, in which you need ab initio methods. Uh, in particular, this happens when you have molecules, for example, where your electrons are strongly correlated. In this case, there is no way you can simulate these systems in a reliable way uh, by, uh, for example, using DFT methods, the density functional theory. In, in these particular cases, the only thing you can do is to recur to uh, ab initio method. Uh, this ab initio method that we will uh, talk about in this lecture is a time dependent ab initio method. This means that not only you are doing simulations which have no physical approximation, but you are also in the time dependent framework. So this means that you can essentially visualize the time dependent evolution of the system and this is a very important point because it helps you to have uh, to have a, a realistic idea of what's going on in your molecule. Uh, every details uh, are reported in this paper here, the many body Wigner Monte Carlo method for time dependent ab initio quantum simulations. This is a paper that has been recently published in Journal of Computational Physics. And this is where you find all the mathematical technicalities. We will not go through all uh, details here, otherwise the lecture will be too long. But if you are interested in the details, this is the paper that you should read. The many body Wigner equation is this equation that you find here in this slide. You can see that formally the expression is not any different than the single body Wigner equation. The only difference that you actually have is that now your phase space is a 6 times n dimensional space where n is the number of particles. So this is an incredibly huge um, phase space. Uh, you can see that uh, even here now the momentum p that is written as a vector, it's not the momentum of a single particle, this is the momentum of every uh, particle that is involved in your system. So this is uh, essentially a 3 times n uh, vector where uh, n is again the number of electrons. So you may understand that this is an incredibly difficult equation to solve. There is no way we can approach this equation analytically, even for simple cases. Even if you put yourself in a one-dimensional space and you have only two particles and you have a very simple uh, potential, still this is something that you cannot treat anymore analytically. You have to recur to some numerical method. And the numerical method that we will use here is a Monte Carlo method. Uh, again, what we can do here, um, and essentially in the same way we did for the single body uh, Wigner equation, is to uh, introduce a semi-discrete uh, phase space. And where we say semi-discrete because your position is still a continuum uh, variable, while now we write the momentum as integer or as multiples of a quantity, which is this delta p here. The delta p is again the step that you have in, in your momentum space, and every momentum of every particle is described or expressed in terms of multiples of this momentum step. Uh, you understand that this, is sum, uh, this sum here that runs over m uh, is actually a sum that runs over a vector here. This m now is a vector of integers. And again, you can see also the discretized version of the Wigner kernel, which reads like this. In particular, we report the sum here as a, this, uh, this particular sum here. So this is just a shortcut for writing this uh, particular um, sum over here. Uh, once we, uh, we introduce the semi-discrete uh, phase space, we can rewrite the many-body Wigner equation uh, according to this uh, semi-discrete uh, phase space, and we obtain this equation here. 
Now what we can do is to proceed further and formally as the same um, in the same way we did for the single body Wigner equation and what we obtain here is that even for the many body Wigner equation we can rewrite the equation as a freedom equation of second kind which is this equation you see here and again we can uh, describe um, once we have write uh, once we write this equation in this form. We can introduce the uh, macroscopic variable of the system, uh, where um, this macroscopic variable is essentially described by this function here, which is a C number, uh, which is the usual way you uh, calculate macroscopic variable in the Wigner formalism. Uh, the only thing that you have to take into account again is that this X and this M now are describing a system of N particles. So this, this is a very, very, very big uh, amount of computation here. Uh, what we know already is that uh, once you have, uh, if we go back one, uh, in the slide, once you have a freedom equation of second kind, you know that you can write formally the solution as a Liouville von Neumann series. And in practice, this means that your macroscopic variable here can be written in terms of a series as well. So now, if we go to the first term, which is this A0 here, the first term of the series of the macroscopic variable, uh, you, can write the uh, you can write this term in this way. And essentially, this is exactly the same things that we were doing in the single body Wigner equation. Uh, the, the same interpretation can be given now, uh, but you, you have to remember that now our virtual particles uh, involved in this system are particles that are describing an entire a whole system of particles. So essentially uh, your, let's say, virtual particle is a particle that is defined over a six-dimensional phase space. So it's um, a, a six times n phase space, I'm sorry. So this means that your virtual particles are six times n dimensional. So these are not just, uh, let's say, coordinates of a single uh, particle anymore. So you can give the same interpretation here. Uh, if you start from a single, um, if you start from, let's say, uh, one uh, particle, one virtual particle, this exponential here is telling you what's the probability that this virtual particle stays in the same phase space coordinates in the time from zero to tau. So there is nothing different than the single body Monte Carlo method here. Uh, it's the, the only difference is that now the notation for the virtual particles is, uh, is different. I mean, what you see here is formally the same thing, but the meaning is completely different. Uh, if we go ahead and formally rewrite the sum of the first three terms of the series, again, we will have something that is extremely uh, similar. I would say formally it just looks like what we have obtained uh, in the single body Wigner um, framework. Uh, the only difference again is that now your virtual particle is defined over a six times n uh, dimensional space and this virtual particle is describing a whole system of, uh, uh, of particles. So again here we see that uh, just as for the single body uh, framework, uh, here we have uh, branching uh, terms and the same interpretation can be given. This is um, essentially, this exponential here is the, the probability that your virtual particle starting from uh, at the phase space point xim will stay in this uh, phase space point uh, from zero to uh, time t prime. Then you have here another exponential that is telling you that your particle, now your virtual particle, is changing momentum and this momentum now is m, uh, m1 and what you have is that once it changed the momentum this exponential here is telling you what the probability that your particle stays in the phase space uh, coordinates x1 m1 and then you go ahead and you have a second exponential 
which is telling you essentially what is the probability that your virtual particle will stay in the phase space coordinates x2, m2 uh, in the time uh, interval starting from t1 and ending at t2. So essentially we have the same interpretation as the single body uh, Monte Carlo um, method. The difference again is that your virtual particles now are describing a set of n particles. And again, even here you see that we have the appearance of this uh, capital gamma function, and you can give an interpretation of this uh, ratio here in terms of the probability of a, appear, of, of a particle with a plus sign appearing here, and then the probability of a, a let's say a negative sign particles appearing here and this is the term that is essentially telling you that you keep the initial or the parent particle so again here we can depict the Monte Carlo method which is essentially the same as the single body um, particle uh, single body uh, Wigner Monte Carlo method uh, the only difference being uh, the interpretation you give of the virtual particles so now that we have a Monte Carlo method for the many body Wigner equation, which does not introduce any uh, physical approximation, we may start to apply it to a, a simple or a relatively simple problem, which is a two body system. And what we do is we start with two electrons which are interacting with each other. And um, what we do is um, we simulate the two-body Wigner equation, which is this equation you see here. As you can see, this is even for just two particles, this is an incredibly difficult problem. You have a distribution function or a quasi-distribution function, which is defined here over a four-dimensional phase space, and which is time-dependent. And you see that the equation here again is a partial integral differential equation, which is uh, quite difficult to deal with, even numerically speaking. Uh, here you have the redefinition of the Wigner kernel, and you can see that now this definition is quite complicated because uh, this kernel again is defined over a four dimensional phase space. So it requires a lot of memory, a lot of computation. So it's not an easy problem to tackle. Uh, essentially, we will simulate two different systems. The first system consisting in these initial conditions that you see here on the top of the slide. This is, as you may understand, this is just the product of two Gaussian wave packets. So this is essentially two Gaussian wave packets which are uh, independent and are involving in time. While in the second system you you see that this is now very different. Here you may see we have a first term which is a Gaussian wave packet again. Then you have a second term which corresponds to a Gaussian wave packet for the second particle. But then here you have a totally new term which is a term that describes uh, entanglement between the two particles. So this is a way to say that the particles are now correlated. And as you may understand, this is a very, very uh, rapidly oscillating um, term uh, due to these two uh, sinusoidal uh, functions. And we will see these oscillations uh, very soon in the, in the plot. So if we simulate the first uh, initial conditions corresponding to independent Gaussian wave packets. If we don't introduce any potential, the only thing that you will have is reporting this, this uh, first picture here, where essentially you have two evolving Gaussian wave packets moving in time and in space and spreading in space, but nothing special is happening. I mean, essentially what you have is the evolution of two Gaussian wave packets. But what is, what is interesting here is that um, we use a many-body approach, an ab initio approach, and what we, we do, uh, I mean, by applying these things to this system, essentially we benchmark our system. And we see that essentially the, this many-body approach is giving you the right answer. Now, if we introduce a potential barrier in the middle, which is this red line you see in this plot here, what you expect is that 
one uh, Gaussian wave packet will interact with this potential barrier and this is due to the fact that the initial velocity is going towards this potential while the second uh, um, Gaussian wave packet uh, is going uh, away uh, from the, the, pot the potential barrier so what you expect is that this thing is not affected by the barrier and if you evolve the system, as a matter of fact, this is what you observe. You see here at time 20 femtoseconds, this, uh, this Gaussian wave packet is strongly, uh, is strongly interacting with the barrier. You start to see um, the appearance of peaks, for example, here. And you start to see some tunneling through the barrier. While essentially the second um, wave packet here is just spreading as a Gaussian wave packet. There is nothing uh, unusual here. And if you report these two wave packets, uh, uh, in the phase space, in the reduced phase space, which is defined in the paper we discussed at the beginning of this lecture, you uh, you really see that uh, the second wave packet here is not affected at all by the potential barrier, while the first is strongly affected. You start to see here um, the appearance of negative peaks which is a signature of a dominant quantum effects and in particular this is tunneling effect while here you don't see pretty much anything different than a Gaussian wave packet moving uh, in space and in time so this is another test that is showing you that the many body Wigner Monte Carlo method is giving you the right answer for the systems so this is a way to test and to show that the method is reliable and it's even robust because as you may see here we go for a uh, quite long uh, final time and still we have uh, the right answer then finally uh, we simulate um, what we have shown uh, in the initial uh, condition slides uh, an entangled system uh, entangled system as you can see here from this reduced phase space consists of in this case two wave packets that you see here but then in the middle you see strong oscillations these red peaks essentially are uh, positive peaks and these blue peaks uh, represent negative peaks so in the middle here you essentially have strong oscillations and these strong oscillations are a way in the Wigner formalism to show you that there is entanglement between these two particles and this is where you see that uh, the Wigner formulation of quantum mechanics is very convenient because if you try to understand entangled particles in the Schrodinger formulation of quantum mechanics, you may have some problems. While here in the Wigner formulation, things are very clear even visually. I mean, entanglement essentially means oscillations uh, between two particles, two wave packets here. So now what we expect is that if we evolve this strongly correlated system, we may uh, have a rotation in the phase space of the initial conditions. And this is exactly what we obtain here. After some time, you start to see that these wave packets are uh, rotating here, and even the entanglement here is rotating. And you don't have any spurious oscillation whatsoever, so the method is behaving correctly. And again, even when you get in proximity of the open boundary conditions here, still you have the right answer. The, the system in this reduced phase space is just rotating, and it's rotating even the entanglement in the correct way. So by means of this ab initio uh, method, which is this many-body Wigner Monte Carlo method, you may be able now to simulate strongly correlated system in a in time dependent fashion and this can be a very big advantage uh, especially in quantum chemistry uh, this will conclude this lecture uh, i thank you very much for your attention